Hi, welcome back to our channel Surfing Our Latest Dream Together. I hope you're all doing well. In this video, we are going to be talking about angiosperms reproduction. The word angiosperms comes from two Greek words. Angus, which means flask, and sperma, which means seed. These flowering plants have roots, stems, leaves, and flowers. The sexual organs in angiosperms are the flowers, and in the flowers, seeds develop in it. After the seeds have germinated, they grow into a full grown plant. Some plants reproduce sexually while others reproduce asexually. In sexually reproducing angiosperms, the flower is the reproductive organ. The basic function of the flower is to reproduce seeds through sexual reproduction. Now let's talk about the structure of angiosperm flowers. We are taking a sample as a hibiscus flower. There are four whorls of the flower and each is in a, arranged in circles and they each have specific functions. The outermost whorl is made up of green thick sepals and they protect the flower and the other three whorls of the flower while it forms and develops. The petals are the next whorl after the outermost whorl. The petals can be fused together or be separate like this of the petals of the hibiscus. They are brightly colored so they can attract pollinators such as insects and birds. They also emit a scent for the same purpose. At the heart of the petals is a nectar gland that secretes a sugary syrup known as nectar to encourage pollination by insects and by other animals. The next whorl is called the male whorl which is made up of stamens. Each stamen consists of an anther and a filament. Grains of pollen are produced in the anther, while the filament supports the anther. These pollen grains contain male sex cells. The last whorl is the pistil, which is the female whorl. Unlike the other three whorls, it consists of three parts. The ovary is at the bottom, which contains the ovules. Ovules are immature seeds and contain a female sex cell. There is a tube that is called the style. The style connects the ovary to the stigma. The stigma receives pollen during pollination. There are two types of flowers, bisexual flowers and unisexual flowers. The bisexual flowers contain both stamens and a pistil. The unisexual flowers only contain either the stamens or a pistil. Flowers that have only stamens are called male flowers and flowers that only have pistils are called female flowers. New plants grow from seeds. Seeds can only form and develop in a flower if the flower has been pollinated and fertilization has taken place. Pollination is the transfer of pollen from an anther to a stigma of the same plant species. Pollen can be spread by the wind or by pollinators. Examples of pollinators are insects, birds and mammals. Unlike the wind, pollinators are living organisms that carry ripe pollen to a stigma. There are different kinds of pollinations. Wind pollination, insect pollination and bird pollination. So now let's look at wind pollination. Wind pollination or anemophily is a process of pollen where it is transported by air currents from one individual plant to another. About 12% of the world's flowering plants are wind pollinated, including many grasses and cereal crops, many trees and the infamous allergenic ragweeds. Wind pollinating plants release billions of pollen grains 
so that a lucky few will hit their targets on other plants. Many of the world's most important crops are wind pollinated. These include wheat, rice, corn, barley and oats. Nut producing trees such as walnuts, pecans and pistachios usually are wind pollinated as well. Many economical important trees are also wind pollinated such as pines, spruces, firs and many hardwood trees. Wind pollinated plants don't normally have flowers but if they do they are very small. Wind pollinated flowers also don't produce perfumes or nectar. They produce large quantities of pollen grains. They also have stamens and stigmas that are exposed to air currents to either catch or distribute pollen. And they also don't normally have flower petals. Wind pollinated plants aren't focused on attracting pollinating organisms. Instead, they produce larger quantities of dry light pollen that forms on flowers that are small and plain and can be carried by the wind. Female structures on wind pollinated plants are adapted to capture the passing pollen from the air, but the majority of the pollen goes to waste. Pollen produced by these plants is very low on nutritional benefit to insects, having low protein content. Usually will be only gathered by insects if other pollen resources are very scarce. The pollen of this plant group frequently brings us symptoms of hay fever and allergies to those that are sensitive to pollen. The next one is insect pollination. Entomophily or insect pollination is the form of pollination whereby pollen of plants, especially but not only from flowering plants, are distributed by insects. Insect pollinated flowers have five characteristics. They are the following. Have a sweet scent and are brightly colored. In most cases, red, white, blue and purple. They produce nectar. They also produce small amounts of sticky pollen that sticks to the insect's body. Have stamens and stigma that is situated inside the flower. The sticky pollen on the insect's body rubs off onto the stigma. Sometimes have patterns called nectar guides that lead the visiting insect to the nectar gland. Sometimes the nectar guides are visible to humans, but other times it can be only seen under UV or ultraviolet light. The last type of pollination is bird pollination. Ornithophily or bird pollination is pollination of flowering plants by birds. This sometimes co-evolutionary association is derived from insect pollination and is particularly well developed in some parts of the world, especially in the tropics, southern Africa and some island chains. Bird pollinated flowers have five characteristics. They are the following. They have brightly colored petals, in most cases red, yellow and orange. They produce no scent due to the bird's weak sense of smell and produce large quantities of nectar, are tubular or trime shaped so that the pollen sticks to the bird's beak when they visit the flowers in search for nectar, have long stamens and stigmas positioned so that they could make contact with the beaks of birds. Fertilization is the interaction of the male and female sex cells fusing together. During pollination, when the flower is pollinated, the pollen sticks to the stigma. For fertilization to occur, the male sex cells need to reach the egg in the ovule. For this purpose, a thin tube called a pollen tube starts to grow out of the pollen grain. The pollen tube starts to grow down the style to the ovary and into the ovule. The tube opens and releases the two male sex cells from the pollen tube to the ovule. 
one of the male sex cells fuses with the egg cell and turns the egg cell into a fertilized egg, which is called zygote. The other male sex cell fuses with other two cells in the ovule. By fusing with these two cells instead of the egg cell, it results in the development of endosperm, which is a starchy food that feeds the developing seed. Once pollination is over, the flower loses all its sepals, petals, stamens and the upper part of the pistil. The only part of the flower which remains is the ovary with the ovule inside. The zygote develops into a seed. The seed develops a pip around it to protect itself. The fruit becomes ripe and is ready to be eaten. Animals that eat the ripe fruit excrete the pip in their droppings. The seed can lie in the animal's droppings for a long time before germination takes place. For a seed of a plant to germinate and grow, it will require a few resources. They are light, air, water, warmth and nutrition. If the seeds of a plant grow next to its parent plant, then many of the germinating seedlings would compete for the same resources. It is more of an advantage for seeds to grow far away from the parent plant. Seeds and fruits are dispersed by wind, animals, humans, water and by means of self-dispersing. Some are using wind for its seed dispersal. The characteristics for wind dispersal are the following. The flowers of some plants, such as Brunswigia, break off and tumble across the felt in the wind, dispersing their seeds. Some fruits grow on long, thin stems. The seeds are light and are shaken out of the fruit capsule when the wind blows on it. A good example is the poppy seed. The fruits and seeds of the dandelions have hair-like outgrowths to help them drift away from the parent plant. Some seeds have wings on them so that they could be carried away by the wind further. The wings can be twisted and balanced so that the seed spins around as it is carried away by the wind. A good example is a hornbeam. Some other plants and trees use water for seed dispersal. The seed dispersal characteristics are some seeds are waterproof and can float on water. For example, the coconut seeds can float on water. They are hollow and have air inside them. The fibers on the outside of the seed repel water. Fruits of reeds have a covering on the outside of the seed that traps air and makes the seed to be able to float on water. Some clever plants can create their own method of dispersing their seeds. They are self-dispersal. For being a self-dispersal, they must follow a few characteristics. They are the seed pods of some plants dry out and burst open with force. A good example of this is the seeds of peas are dispersed like this. The casing of some fruits split open when they fall from the plant. This causes the fruit to roll some distance away from the parent plant. An example is a horse chestnut. The last type of seed dispersal is done by animals and humans. The characteristics are follows. Some seeds develop a sweet fruit to attract animals. The animals eat the fruit and discard the seeds or they eat both the fruit and the seeds. The seeds passes right through the digestive system and ends up in the animal droppings. Certain dry fruit have seeds with thorns, barbs and hooks that cling to the fur of animals and later fall off in other places. An example is a burdock. Thank you for watching this video. If you found this video informative, then please like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel. 
Till then, see you later. Bye-bye.